here at the Independence Reformed Bible Church. Of course, we allow for questions following the sermon. Is there a question this morning? I, I think probably most of the questions might come up next week, but there just may be some this morning. Yes. Um, so we're talking about harmonizing the passages in the Bible, and we're going to talk next week about harmonizing this passage with the you know, yeah. optimistic eschatology. Yeah, basically harmonizing the passages that we read in Revelation with one of the passages that I've alluded to in the past two weeks. Now, most of the people that I talk to that have a negative view of history yes. have many other passages as well. Right. You know, for narrows the gate, you know, wax and worse and worse type of stuff. Yes. Are you going to take any time to address any of those? You know what, perhaps I should. Um, I want to spend this time, um, the time on this, because I felt from my own reading and my own experience that this was the strongest one against that. The strongest one. And so I really want to spend time on it. But, uh, it might not be a bad idea to take the, maybe a, a couple more uh, passages, uh, sermons. might not be a bad plan at all. Um, Most of the people I talk to, you know, yeah. their biggest thing is, you know, narrows the gate. Right, and few would be to find it. Yeah, few, you know, yeah. And, and, you know, that's, I mean, maybe a very easy, maybe it's a two-minute harmonization of that passage, but I'd be curious to... Well, believe me, passages take a two-minute character and make, make it into 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, what, it's what we do. Um, but I think I could take some time to time that. There's, there's, a, there's a few passages there. In, in my experience, there's about seven or eight passages that they use that certainly could be addressed and, and harmonized, I believe, with what we've, what we've read. I know in my experience, too, when I've had this, this is just a separate discussion. I'll just address it briefly because I know there's other questions. But I, I know that when we've, I've talked with some of my friends about some of these passages that I've mentioned, I often get sort of a deer in the headlight look, like, like I've never even seen that before, and uh, that's been that's been my experience anyway. So what we want to do is we want to educate everybody what the Bible says for the, for, for all of it. So um, I'll certainly take that into consideration, and I think um, I, I think I'd really like doing that brief couple sermons. I'd enjoy it. So, um, so. so so your, your, your suggestion is falling on very uh, hearing ears here. <laughs> yeah, fertile ground, yeah. I, th I think it's growing rather quickly. Uh, I think it's a giant oak already. Um, um, yes, Dave. Just, I think I know what you mean when you say time in history, but just so uh, everyone knows, can you just okay. clarify I think, I think we're on the same page, but some people might not be. Yeah. When I say time in history, I mean history as we know it from the beginning until the return of Christ. We, you have a, a, a time now um, that people would, would say, or, oh, let, let me go back to when I was being taught dispensational premillennialism. History ended at the, at, at the return of Christ, and he establishes his kingdom on earth. He comes on a, on a horse, and they pretty much wipe out all the wicked. And that is not history. In other words, the millennium for premillennialists is not part of time and history as we know it. Whereas for, for us, or for me, the millennium began with the um, reign of Christ, as we saw this morning, and the millennium is part of history as we know it. There's no catastroph catastrophic event to come to begin the millennium. It's here. You would say time in history would be until the resurrection. Yeah, that's right. The resurrection of 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 the uh, human uh, of, of the dead. The, ju saw. the judgment right. and resurrection. That, that judgment we saw here at the end of Revelation twenty, that constitutes the end of end of history. The dead, small and great, sea giving up its dead, end of history at that time. The end of the 24 hour, 7 day, 365 day period. Yep. More or less. It'd be from Genesis 1 until that day would be yep. time in history. Yes. Okay. All of them. Sorry for being. Sorry. I, I, Sorry. Just, I think some people don't understand it that way. Yeah. I, that's how I would understand yeah. it. Yeah. That's, that's how I believe it's bad. You, you know, it's like, 
It's like um, showing mercy to those who love me to a thousand generations. Well, there's no, there's no interruption there. This is time and history here. This is ongoing here. Um, Abraham blesses all the nations of the earth. Is there some kind of uh, separation? Or does, are those nations blessed in time and in history? Other questions? Good questions. Yes, John. Uh, you made reference today to the Jewish leaders talking political trash talk, essentially, at the, at the pilot, for a pilot. Never really, really heard it put that way before. But I mean, you know, what's his definite trash talk? We have no king seat, but Caesar. Well, what's tra well that, that's, that's really good. Because I, I, Pilate thinks he's going to trash talk them. I, well, I don't trash talk them. Hey, I'll find a fault with guy. And, and really, that was a slam at them. You're all excited about a guy who I have no problem with. And they're, they're going to out trash talk him in a hurry. No problem. Yeah, no problem. We like to go home. Right. And, and then in Acts, uh, Peter stands up and says that there's salvation in no one else. So there's no other name of heaven by which you may be saved. What's interesting is that Augustus Caesar, the, the imperial court under Augustus Caesar, said that same thing about Caesar on the coinage of Augustus Caesar's time. He was called Soter. He was called Savior. And it was said of Augustus Caesar that there's no other name under heaven by which you may be saved but Caesar. But Augustus. So, Peter's being very political here. In, a, in his unlearned state. But, you know, it's, it's a very interesting uh, situation where the political aspects of this are being continued. Into uh, into church history, when we get church. Maybe the learned and educated had learned that maybe Augustus Caesar is a savior. Who knows? Who knows what they learned? But uh, I don't know if you heard that or not. But there was a um, a German archaeologist or historian named Ethelbert Stauffer who discovered the coin apparently at which Caesar Augustus had said. There's no name under heaven given among men very close to this whereby we must be saved, that name of Caesar. Caesar Augustus. This is documented. And here's Peter saying, actually, Caesar Augustus has it wrong. It's Christ. There's no other name under heaven given among men where and it's the name of Christ. So we can't. If we, if we believe that Christ is king over all, is that not a political statement? S seriously. Can I stand here and say that Christ is king overall and not be political? Interestingly enough, there's one guy who figured it out, even if we can, that was the original Herod, right? The original Herod figured it out. This baby is going to challenge his wicked dominion. Christ the king challenges all wickedness. And just because you happen to be a king someplace doesn't get you off the hook. In fact, it gets you into Psalm 2 territory. Other questions? Yes, Jeremiah. Just a comment that um, I know you've always said that it doesn't matter as much what you say, but what you do, you know, the fruit um, of somebody's life is more important than than what they say. Because it seems like that could be a takeaway from at least part of your sermon, you know, as far as, you know, in terms of somebody's work for Christ's kingdom um, is really what matters. Uh, Thank you, Jeremiah, because I, 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 I sure was trying to get that point across at the end. And I, I sure do hope that everybody understands that. I, I'm standing here with a particular view. I'm a pastor of a church. I can only give the best, the best I have, there are people that are a lot smarter than I am. Now, now there's a revelation for you, right? Aren't you, aren't you glad to hear that there are people smarter than me out there? New knowledge for you. Um, that, that have different views of things. Um, we can excuse, I think I can excuse different points of view on eschatology. 
But how can we possibly excuse slothfulness? Can't. That was my that was my wrap up at the end. Yes. One one more thing is kind of fun. You, you were talking about harmonization of scripture. Have scripture never contradicts itself. In, in Psalm one, we talk about a tree firmly planted by streams of water as being a symbol of the righteous. It's notable that the tree is planted, didn't grow up wild or by a randomly. Randomly. Yeah. And it refers to something that you talked about, I believe we talked about this last week. In Matthew 15, 13, Christ answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father did not plant shall be uprooted. So, I mean, the, there's a harmonization there in Scripture. It's just a, bit, a great example of how Scripture just consistently talks the same, same language. language through and through. Yeah. Planted, father, planted by the Father. Yeah. It's, yeah. Did, did, you all, did you all hear that? Yeah. I can't add anything to it. Or shouldn't. Yes, Dave. Side note to the harmonization. You hear, you hear in, in a comment you made in your sermon about things like um, the pagans. They they know the sermons very. Well. They know they know stuff very well. You know they, they you know they, they'll say, well, you, sh you shouldn't eat shellfish, or you know they come back with all these arguments. I I actually saw one just this weekend on Facebook. You know the great. Yeah. The right the arbiter of truth. <laughs> Facebook. But it's a it's a police department that is saying that if you live within our would live within our municipality, you have to have this sticker on the back of your car. And you have to buy it. It's in Pennsylvania here. I haven't found out yet if this is like you know, if it's actually true or not, but you have to have this sticker on. So there are some people on there quoting, you know the Bible and, and what the civil government's duty is, and the police department comes back and quotes Romans, Romans 13. Romans 13. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 And, what, what was the sticker about, or what? Uh, it was basically, it, it's Hay Lake or Hayward uh, Municipality is what it said. <laughs> it, it was basically a revenue generating, um, they're running short on funds. We're not stopping enough speeders around here. And people who park in front of fire hydrants. There's got to be another way to get some money. But but it's just interesting, you know. It, it, so so right there, most people just shut up. You know, the, it, the police department came back with Romans 13, yeah. and most people just went quiet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we've got to be able to fight that with with the civil mag magistrate's duties. Yeah. Uh, well, so. yeah, and I we cannot fight unless we understand, first of all, that Christ has jurisdiction over that police department. I think we lose the argument when we start to say, well, that, they're the police. They have no responsibility to obey Christ. They're their own separate jurisdiction. And that is really what a lot of us believe. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of us believe that Christ has his jurisdiction, church, maybe family. The state has their jurisdiction, you know, civil society, and Christ has nothing to say to them. And honestly, I've had discussions where, where the idea of Caesar having to bow to Christ, just like everybody else, was actually a brand new thought to some of these people. If we don't start there, though, Christ having jurisdiction over everything, we'll lose every one of those discussions. Um, if you get a chance to read a kind of a horrifying book, it's called The Witness of Buchenwald by Pastor Paul Schneider. He was a uh, pastor in, in Nazi Germany. And um, he was challenging some of the things that were being said. He specifically challenged uh, Alfred Rosenberg. Specifically. Got into a public battle with Alfred Rosenberg. Alfred Rosenberg was basically kind of Secretary of State under, under Hitler. Basically what he was, kind of. A, kind of like a, his, his uh, spokesman on a higher level. And uh, Pastor Paul Schneider got into it with him. Uh, Pastor Paul Schneider wound up uh, going to jail, wound up um, losing his uh, ministry. Um, he was pastor of two churches. The state came in and told him that he could not um, uh, disallow certain people from taking communion. He went to jail. 
And uh, while he's in jail, he's being lectured by his captors about his responsibility. And guess what passage they quoted to him? Went right to Romans 13, boy. If you read the entire passage, it says that we obey the civil magistrate because he's God's deacon. He's working for God. And his job is to put an end to wickedness. And that's not included with forcing people to put stickers on their bumpers. Yes? One off topic, well, we talked about art in the beginning. Yes. I don't know, I, I don't know, I haven't watched the reviews or heard how politically correct it is, but the Pilgrim's Progress is going on the big screen this week. Oh yeah? Is that the one that's animated? Yeah. Uh, yeah, did you hear that Pilgrim's Progress come to the big screen? Um, how trustworthy are the makers? I don't know. I don't know either. Okay, that's my, always my first question. When pagans get a hold of something good, it's like a good bad tree trying to bear good fruit, right? But sometimes, in spite of themselves, they. The are Christians. They, they, they were talking about it at the film festival. Yeah. As far as Christians producing. So as far as you know, it's good, honest people producing it. That's what I. As far as you know. That's what I thought. Okay. Okay. That's all right. As far as you know. As far as I know. Okay. Who's Who's going to see this? I'm going. Okay. You guys, will let us know. I want to know. Well, it's only two showings. Okay, it's Christian. Thursday night. Yeah. <laughs> it's third. Okay, so this is this is good. Lidditz. Lidditz up to Lancaster Airport. Yeah. Had one at seven o'clock. One one room. Yeah. They sold out and they opened the second one on Saturday afternoon. This past Saturday? Yeah. Okay. Yesterday. Yesterday. Okay. So we we were going to we were gonna go and there was only like one seat left. So I saw well, be a man, but your wife said and you yeah. Yeah. I saw a second one open. Okay. So we got tickets for Thursday night. Okay. The other showing is Saturday at twelve fifty five. Okay. PM. In Lettuce? In Lettuce. Twelve fifty five? PM. 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 In the afternoon. Okay. Man, I, I, okay. I, I'm convinced it's Christian now. I am. I'm serious. <laughs> Well, I'm just, I'm just, I mean, if it is, and, and if anyone, you know, I think art, yeah, if, if it is biblical and, and they've done due diligence to the book, yeah, then the problem is Christians don't know about it, we don't support it, right? And we need to, and then they say, see, we did something for them and they didn't know. It's like, it's like, uh, for me in my house, it's uh, it's just like uh, egg salad. I, I say, my wife, I love egg salad, right. So she makes it, and then I'm used to doing other stuff, and I don't eat the egg salad, it goes bad. See, I make it for you, <laughs> and you don't, you don't eat it. That's what, that's what they do, to, that's what the pagans do to us with this kind of stuff. See, we gave you something, Chris, you didn't want it. Back to the wickedness. Whatever. I really want to see this now. Because if you're talking about art, I would argue the, the greatest piece of art ever in Christian history is Pilgrim's Progress. Public book ever. Ever. Behind the Bible. And I know not everybody in here is a Pilgrim's Progress fan. Do what you got to do to love Pilgrim's Progress. I don't know how to tell you to do it. Just what, 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 what may, maybe the movie will help you. <laughs> yeah. Do they have showings up in Reading that you're going I looked somewhere. Where did I find them? Was it at Lidditz? Yeah. yeah. I think it was at There's very few. It's, it's not everywhere. Chester County has one. There's about 10 theaters in Pennsylvania that are showing it. Shame on me, but I have a, 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 an automatic reaction. The less showings it is, the more Christian it must be. I mean, that's a real simplistic way to think about it, but that's, the, uh, that's what I think. Yes? Well, as Christians go to patronize the movie, then that will continue to get better and better and better, and then it'll be a week, and then two weeks, and then a month. And then. Yeah, that's right, and I sure hope I, I sure hope, if you can possibly see it, I hope you can, because it, it, it sure sounds like a good investment of your money. And I'll tell you what, John, are you okay with this? What about, are you okay with what I'm about to say? Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you don't have the money, because it's not just the tickets. You can't sit there in a movie theater and smell the popcorn and not get hungry. I don't care how much you ate before. It's like going to the ball game. 
I don't care. If you, you can eat before the ball game, you smell the hot dogs, you get hungry. It's just the way it is. So if there is a, if there is a financial <laughs> issue here, John, will, will, will we support anyone? We'll who, buy the egg cell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He'll buy the egg cell. Hey, come to us if it's a financial thing, okay? Go see this movie. Yes, Dave. Danny Corrales. Anybody ever hear that? Right He's now. the producer. Oh, you've heard it? He's the producer. Okay. What do you know about him? Uh, remember his name from Lost in uh, Philton. Oh, really? Or uh, in San Antonio. San Antonio, Danny Corrales. Remember, okay. Uh, just remember the name. Okay. Years ago, we attended Christian Film Festival uh, under Vision Forum, and you remember his name from there. Very good. That's, that's a good sign. That's a real good sign. All right. All right. Productive time here this morning. John.